right, ladies and gentlemen, we've made it to Friday. Welcome aboard the Steve Malzberg Show from our New York City studios. We have Roger Stone, we have Quan LX, and joining us shortly, Jeff Rohrer uh, will talk to us uh, about the police shootings and a ruling out of the Supreme Court in Massachusetts today, which is going to boggle your mind. I promise, because it's boggled mind. Does my mind look boggled? Okay. Um, now, we also have some news from Drudge. He himself is reporting that the uh, Presidential uh, Debate uh, Commission has denied uh, Hillary, uh, well, Roger Stone told us earlier in the America Talks Live that Hillary wanted commercial breaks, wanted the chairs so they could sit down. But the debate is going to be, uh, according to the commission, no breaks, 90 minutes, doesn't matter if she coughs, doesn't matter if she needs, someone's got to go to the bathroom. They're there for 90 minutes with no breaks. So that's going to be very interesting. She also wanted a, 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 a step stool to stand on to make up the height differential. They said no, the commission, but they are allowing her to have a custom-made podium that she's going to bring. So that's, uh, they should inspect that. You know, they should wand it for electronic devices <laughs> and servers, I guess. All right. Hillary was asked uh, some very tough questions by a very brave uh, reporter named Sarah Faison down in Tampa. Watch. I want to talk about your health for a moment. Mm -hmm. It was startling to many Americans to see you get into, the, into that van. I certainly hope you're feeling oh, much better. Absolutely. I wanted to ask you that I know that you provided documents from mm -hmm. your doctor saying mm -hmm. that you are fit to be the President of the United States. Right. Some doctors have said because of your age as well as your opponent's age that you could be at higher risk for dementia or even Alzheimer's and have suggested that you take some neurocognitive <laughs> tests. Would you be willing to I, do that? You know, I, I am very sorry I got pneumonia. I'm very <laughs> glad that antibiotics took care of it and uh, that's behind us now. And then she said, why am I not ahead by 50 points? No, oh, that was yesterday, sorry. Um, and then the reporter followed up with this. Would you be willing to take those tests, though? I, we, there's no need for that. I mean, my, the information is very clear, and the information, as I said, meets the standards that every other person running for president has ever had to meet. And I'm happy that we've met and even exceeded them in, in certain ways. All right, so there you go. She gave a little cackle when asked about taking the neurological exam. Looked like she was taking a neurological exam, squeezing... That woman's finger, whether that woman was a doctor or not, before she passed out on the way to the car, uh, we saw the picture with the, uh, the Hillary's hand over the woman's finger, and that's a, that's a standard neurological test. Squeeze, you know, squeeze with each hand to see if you have strength in your hands. But, hey, she had pneumonia. So, naturally, the first thing you do with pneumonia is you have someone squeeze your finger. Um, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, if you were watching America Talks Live, you heard me talk about a, uh, a catcher for the Seattle Mariners baseball team by the name of Steve Clevenger. Uh, he's on the disabled list right now. He's not playing, but he gets paid. Uh, and he put out these tweets, and these are from a, a Fox uh, News um, uh, report that we have them. Because they're, they're erased. He erased them. Let's put up the tweets. Black people beating whites when a thug got shot holding a gun by a black officer. Ha ha expletive, cracks me up, keep kneeling for the anthem. Um, now, as I said earlier, uh, I don't know what the expletive was. Uh, he deleted this tweet. He, um, there was another tweet, so let's put the other tweet up. Black Lives Matter is pathetic once again. Obama, you are pathetic once again. Everyone involved should be locked behind bars like animals. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, whether you agree with what he said or disagree, whether you think it's insensitive or sensitive. Doesn't he have a First Amendment right to write that? He wasn't on the, he wasn't playing. He wasn't in the stadium. He wasn't in uniform, unlike the players in the NFL who kneel, who put their fists in the air, who disrespect the anthem and the flag in our country. This was on his own time. This was on his own time. And I mean, what he said, yeah, was insensitive. I don't know what the expletive was. I don't know. But so I said in the previous show at noon, I said, what are they going to do? Suspend him? Because here's what they, uh, the, the Mariners organization put up. We are currently examining all internal options that are available to us as we determine appropriate next steps. So lo and behold, during the course of the afternoon, comes across the wire 
Mariners suspend Steve Clevenger after inflammatory tweets, and here's what they said. As soon as we became aware of the tweets posted by Steve yesterday, we began to examine all of our options in regard to his standing on the team. This is from the general manager, Jerry DePoto. Today, we have informed him he is suspended for the remainder of the season without pay. So if you insult Obama, if you insult Black Lives Matter, if you call thugs who are beating up and chasing down whites animals, and you play for the Seattle Mariners, even though you tweeted this out on your own time, not in uniform, not in the stadium, not during a game, not for the... You're suspended without pay. You have no constitutional right. If you're the feckless, disgusting, despicable NFL and their overpaid commissioner, you could do it. You could spit on the flag during the national anthem, in uniform, in stadium, on TV, in front of the crowd, and that's your constitutional right. What's wrong? What's what's wrong here? I I don't know, but I he's a member of. Steve Clevenger of the Mariners is a member of the Players Association. I haven't seen it, but I would assume they will appeal this. And again, I wouldn't have tweeted those things out, but I've said things about what happened to, with the hunting down of white people. I called them thugs. I said, where's Obama been? Dan Bongino said, where the hell's Obama? I think it's a legitimate concern. Suspended without pay? Now, he apologized after that. It doesn't reflect who I am. I hope you won't judge me by this. He's trying to save his career because you have no constitutional right, apparently, if you take the wrong political view. But if you take the political view that makes the leagues shake in their boots, then everything is your constitutional right. Very, very sad. All right, folks, joining us now, retired police officer, executive director of the St. Louis Police Officers Association and author of The War on Police, How the Ferguson Effect is Making America Unsafe. Jeff Rorder is here. Jeff, of course, breaking news uh, today. Uh, the uh, city of Charlotte has not released the uh, police video of the shooting of uh, Keith Lamont Scott, but uh, the um, family has released a video uh, taken by the wife of uh, Mr. Scott, um, uh, not, she was not in the car with him. She saw this happening uh, from outside the car, I think in front of her own home. And I'm going to run it for the folks. And we had to put some, uh, understandably, some bleeps and beep tones uh, to, 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 for cursing purposes. But here's, here's what's been released. Keith, don't do it. Keith, get out the car. Keith, Keith, don't you do it. Don't you do it. Keith, Keith. Kate, don't you do it. Did you shoot him? Did you shoot him? Did you shoot him? He better not be dead. He better not be dead. I know that much. I know that much. He better not be dead. Okay. Now, uh, Jeff, welcome. Um, uh, what I heard there, well, and of course the, the video does not show the actual shooting. You hear it. Uh, right. But he, she was saying from afar... Keith, don't do it. Keith, don't do it. And then you heard an officer at least once say, drop the gun, drop the gun. I heard, that's what I just heard. Yeah, and I, you know, I think this gives your listeners, a, or your viewers rather, a good uh, a snippet of how volatile these situations are and how, how quickly they unfold. Um, I mean, it, you know, this, obviously, you know, they, they were given the, the man instructions. He wasn't following them. Uh, his wife, even as a, as a, as a casual observer who's filming it knows that he's he's endangering himself that that his non-compliance is going to get him in trouble she's pleading don't don't you do it keith don't you do it and and pleading for him to surrender and uh and also telling the cops by the way that he's unarmed which is wrong um and and you know he's obviously uh disregards her her pleads uh disregards uh, the police officer's orders, and uh, we can't see it on there, but we know what the count is, that, that he uh, you know, flourished the gun at, at officers and left them 
no choice but to, to deploy uh, deadly force. So do you think that this video, uh, can we play it again? Just at the, I want to play again. I want to make sure, and you tell me, Jeff, if you hear what I hear, him saying, the cops saying, drop the gun. Can we play it again? Need the video, need the audio. Get out the car. Keith, Keith, don't you do it. Don't you do it. Keith. Keith. Yep. Keith. All right. All right. I, I, I'm hearing him shout out, drop, drop the gun, drop the gun. Right. Right. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised, Steve, that they families released. Well, that's what I'm going to ask you. Doesn't, it, does, in your view, does this video help the, uh, the, the police case? Well, it squares up completely with their account, and uh, in no way does it square up with the, the family's account that, uh, you know, he's just thumbing through a Herman Melville novel when, when the officers execute him in cold blood. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree more from what we've seen here. Okay, uh, let, let's move on. And are you surprised that Betty Shelby, the officer in, in Tulsa, was uh, charged uh, already, A, and B, with uh, first-degree manslaughter? Uh, two years ago before Ferguson, I would have been surprised. Now, uh, very little surprises me. Ah, okay. um, you know, and, and I'll tell you, you know, I, I'll, I'll provide this caveat. I don't know um, what the prosecutor knows. Maybe they know more than I do, and maybe there's something in there that that uh, um, that uh, justifies this manslaughter charge. But if all they've got is what we've seen in these helicopter and dashboard videos, uh, they ain't got nothing. I mean, they'll never get a jury right. I, to convict. I agree because, and correct me if I'm wrong. Tell me what you think. His, I don't think his hands were up when he was shot. Oh, absolutely not. No, yeah. I, you know, I. I've been on CNN the last three nights talking about this, yeah. um, and uh, in, in no way were his hands in the air when, yeah. when uh, he was shot. It, it's hard to tell because the helicopter's circling. Right, That's but you could, I was able to, 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 to make that. Hey, Jeff, thank you so much, my friend. Always great to talk to you. Sorry it's always under these circumstances. You bet, Steve. Take I wish care. it was under different circumstances. Take care. All right, folks, earlier today I had the pleasure of speaking with my good friend Roger Stone on my noon show, America Talks Live. We're going to see some of that when we come back on the other side of the break. Told you, breaking news left and right. Don't go away.